Right, welcome everybody. Welcome to the Suffolk Holiday Music Making webinar. So nice to see you all here. My name is Phil Healy and I'm the founder of Inclusive Music and I'm excited and delighted that you're here working with Suffolk Music Hub on this holiday songwriting webinar. It's my belief that everyone has music inside of them and uh, we're aiming to make sure that we bring that out in these sessions. And it's not only the webinars that you'll have, it's the online course, which you've got for a whole year um, to expand your learning and to really become proficient at the art of songwriting. So I'm gonna share my screen now and just show you what we are going to be doing in this session. So I'm going into BandLab for education now. And what you see here is the first process, the first step in the process is to be building a four bar section with four tracks, a beat, a bass, a melody or tune, and one of your choice. Okay, so this is what we're gonna be hoping to do in this session, that's the first part of it. And depending on how fast we go, we're gonna be building it into an introduction, which is this section below. It looks like, like an under, underneath the stairs. And this is the build up of an introduction made from one of these blocks of sounds that we like. This is one I prepared earlier. Let's hope you can hear this. <laughs> So that's, as I said, a beat, a bass, and a couple of keyboards and strings put together into a group that sounds good together. Here's another one. Let's have a listen to uh, another four sounds together. And the last one I put together. So I'm hoping that everyone is on this page at edu.bandlab.com, Suffolk Summer Holiday Music Making. I'm going to give the code here, add student. There it is. Okay, so what I want you to do right now is go to the webinar one, Monday, August the 10th. What you should see here is start assignment. Teacher's assignment, click on browse loops. So your screen should look like this. And in the bottom right hand corner, it says browse loops. And now we're in the mix editor which is where we can start making music. On the right hand side, you will see the different loop packs. And I know some of you have already had a look at this, which is great. But if you haven't, to hear a loop pack, you can click any one of these play buttons here. They're the demo buttons. So if I like the sound of some Afro beat, I'm gonna click on here. and I get a flavor of what it might be like to put together an Afro beat song. If I'm not so keen on that, I'll just scroll down and try some Joe Ford drum and bass maybe. Okay, so your first task today is having a listen to some of these loop packs. Now, you're not going to be able to do, listen to all of them, so maybe be guided by the title. So if you're into grunge, you could find millennial grunge, abstract hip hop, um, P-Funk, hard step, Latin pop, Latin house, there's a huge choice. So I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes right now to be exploring. So I'll put my timer on for about three minutes while you have a quick listen 
and make a note of anything that you like so that you don't forget it. Let's give you a couple of minutes to have a go. There are some loop packs. Uh, let's have a look, for example, right at the top, which aren't very, very good for songwriting. And the reason for that is they're only one instrument. For example, the guitar loop effects doesn't have many beats uh, or bass. It just concentrates on the, the loop effects. Same with the African Afropella is all vocals. So I would recommend you choose something where you can hear beats, bass, melodies, tunes, and it has the words hip hop or country or something that you recognize. Afrobeat, turbo trap, retro city pop, roots and dub are all good. Great, let's make a start then. So the next thing to do to access the sounds within these loop packs, as I said before earlier, but I'm gonna say it again. I like today, I'm gonna to go for two-step. Um, there it is, for me, it's two-step garage. And so the next thing to do to access the sounds is click in the actual picture, one click, will get us into the different components, the different elements of sound. And so if you look at my screen, you can see there's bass up there, beats, effects, keys, percussion, and string. The first thing I'm gonna ask you to look for is a beat. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. You could just scroll down and you might find the beats because it says in my one, it does say beat. But what we're looking for to hear a beat, you just click on it once. <laughs> click on it again to stop. Listen to the next one. And you can go through as many as you've got. Let's suppose I like that one. I'm going to drag it by holding down the mouse button and put it up here. And I want to make sure it starts at bar one. So I'm going to put my hand or my cursor, my mouse over here, hold it down again and drag it to bar one. For those using the lo-fi, um hip hop, it was uh, instead of beat, it was drums, just in case there, were any, there was any confusion there. Good point, Chris, thank you. So we're looking for drums, beat, percussion, anything that's gonna start giving us a rhythm. In the meantime, those who've got a beat, the next thing we're looking for is a bass. So start auditioning the bass, by just clicking on it. And if you're happy, if you've got one that you like, there's no harm in dragging it into the mix editor right beneath the drums. On the webinar, if you can stop your beat or your song that's playing and give me your attention because it's very easy to get excited now and get carried away and start making your own song. And I'm hoping that this tutorial is all about you staying with me so that you get the start of the track and in your own time, you can obviously play around with making new songs uh, in your own time, whenever you want, that'd be great. For now, there's something I need you to do. So make sure you're looking at the Zoom screen, at my shared Zoom screen, because I want you to change a setting that's gonna help when you put uh, different sounds together. So I'd like you to go up to the top left-hand corner where it says view. And if you click on view, there's some drop-down menus. What I'm interested in is the second one down which says grid size. And by default, it's set to smart. And what this means is you can move your, your beat around and it doesn't snap to any of those grids very well. 
and I want to make it really easy to match up your tempos of your beats and your bass so they all start and finish at the same time. So I want you to change the grid size from smart, which is ticked, to bar. So I'm going to click on that. And now bar is clicked. And what this means is that now when I try and move this, it will snap to bar two. If I try and move it again, it'll snap to bar three. And I can't get in between. And that's handy when I want to make sure that everything starts at bar one and it finishes at bar five. And anybody whose beat is not as long as mine, what you need to do is go up to this circle with an arrow on and drag it until it is at bar five. That's the copy function, by the way. And it means we can, even if we've got a short loop, we can repeat it as many times as we like. So the next thing is a bass, a bass that you like. So let's go to my screen. And again, we audition, find the word bass. If you can hear mine, that's very deep. And I can't really hear it. So have a listen to all your bases, and when you're ready, I want you to drag it in underneath the beat and drag it to bar one. And you'll see how it clicks exactly in place. And finally, is to check whether your beat and your bass sound good together. Okay, I will give you another two minutes to find that perfect bass that you like and to put it underneath your beat. I was just going to say for some of the bass sounds, especially when you're dealing with hip hop, um, like Phil said, some of the um, bass notes, the frequencies might be too low if you are just on a laptop um, speakers. If you are plugged into any um, hi-fi speakers or you've got um, extra speakers for, um, plugged into your computer you might find you actually hear more of the audio, especially when you're dealing with bass lines they don't come across so well on laptop speakers thank you Chris very good point so anything that says sub bass is going to be very low it's fabulous for hip-hop and trap but you may not hear it without nice big speakers if you've got headphones, by the way, that might be better. But if you're wear, working as a pair, you'll obviously need some headphone splitters. And we're going to go slow on this first webinar just to make sure that you're with us, following us. Um, and if you're waiting, in other words, if you have got your bass, and I can see most of you have, then start listening to other sounds. Don't drag them in at the moment, but see what else you like within your loop pack and the next sound we're looking for is a melody or tune maybe something you could whistle to or hum um, something catchy it does depend on the genre you are in so i'm more interested in the fact that you like it and that it sounds good to you and it matches up or it sounds good with your beat and your bass and just checking that you're happy with your beat and your bass. I'm going to play mine. And you can see there, it stops and it will go on to the rest of the bars. Now, it's really handy in music when we're working on something to hear it over and over again. So I'd like you all to go up to the left hand corner and there is a button that if you hover over it says cycle and it looks like two arrows going round and round. If you click on that, you'll now notice that there's an orange bar that has appeared and it defaults to four bars. So it starts at bar one and it ends at bar five. And if we play that, 
great when you want to hear music when you're really starting out adding sounds it's great to not have to keep stopping it and going back to the beginning just for it to go round and round I'm also going to zoom in so on the top right hand corner let me show you this feature because it's very useful we have to take loops off because loops hide it unfortunately so loops are off and here is a plus button I'm going to zoom in so long as I can see bars one to five whilst we're working in that area. That's too big. So zoom out a little bit. There we go. You might want to do that if that helps so that you've got nice, a nice lot of real estate. And you can see now the bars are split into smaller sections, 4.2, 4.3, etc. Let's get on and add I want a melody or a tune. If you haven't got any in your loop pack, don't worry. Find something that you like. For me, I'm just going to click on uh, keys, keyboards. They're probably going to play a tune. Not so keen on that. That's okay. I think I can find something better. I like that. Right, I will drag that in. You know what we're gonna do now. Go underneath the bass, drop it, and then move it to bar one. Now here you can see this is shorter. This is only two bars long. So now I'm gonna to have to use, if I want to copy it, of course, I can click on that right hand button and it jumps to bar five it's very important i liked it on his own does it go with the beat and the bass let's find out yes i'm happy with that and the last thing to do then is if you're happy with your work so far Go to the top right hand corner and it says save. So I'm going to click that and the project is saved. And by the way, if you're not happy with something you've just done, there's a number of options. You can click on it and press delete on your keyboard like that. You can press the right hand mouse button and that brings up a menu and there's delete there. That works the same. Or, and preferably I would suggest, you go to these ellipses here, right click or left click actually, and you can delete the whole track. And so that disappears as well. There's an undo function in the top left hand corner. If you make a mistake, think, oh no, actually I really like that after all. Click on that a couple of times and you can get back whatever you've deleted. So this is my three tracks so far. I'm happy with that. I've saved it. I'm going to choose, I always like melodies. I like tunes. That's the way I like to make music. But the beauty about using BandApp and, to making your, and for making your own music is that you decide exactly how your song wants to turn out. Because after all, it's your song and you've got to be happy with it. And that's the beauty of BandLab. We've got so much choice. And what I'm doing here really is guiding you to making a successful song or a, so a song that sounds good from the start. So I'll be a little bit prescriptive, but if you want to go off piste and decide something different, that's up to you as well. So I like the strings uh, in this, in this two-step one. So I'm going to put in the strings, there they go, and drag it to bar one. And 
Of course, I need to listen to it because I like the strings on their own, but do they go with the keys, the bass, and the beats? Let's find out. <laughs> The first thing I notice personally is that the new strings is a bit quiet. And if you look at the waveform, and that's the shapes on these sounds, you can see this strings is smaller. Let's ask you a question. If this string is small, looking at the waveform, who can tell me which of the sounds I've used so far is the loudest just by looking at it. Yes, it's the track two, it's the bass, and it's because it looks bigger. And I call this up here, the white line is the ceiling and down below is the floor. So if you see a sample that's right up to the ceiling and right down to the floor, you know it's gonna be loud. So what I noticed is I can't really hear the strings that well. So let me ask you a question. Some of you will have explored this before. Some of you will be new to this, but is there anybody who's got any ideas how I can get the balance right and make the strings a little bit louder and make the bass a little bit quieter? The simplest way is to go over to the sounds here, where it says two-step strings, and there here is a volume control. Okay, and if I click on the track, it goes green. So I am now going to turn up the volume, not to full. I never like things being full, but maybe just to a little bit louder than it was. So about there, and I'm going to go to the bass, and I'm going to turn this one down a little bit by just clicking on it and having a listen. <laughs> The bass is still a little bit loud on my one, so that goes down a bit. And the strings, I still want a little bit louder because they are quiet and they don't come in that often. That's good to me. And remember, even if I save it now, which I'm going to, it doesn't mean we can't change it at any point. And I'm going to ask you one more thing to do, which is name your song. So at the top, in the middle here, at the moment it says new personal project. So I'm going to delete that. So I'm going to call it two step, first song, and I'm going to save it. And by the way, when you save this, it's all saved in the cloud. You can't lose it, which is great. Even if your computer crashes, you'll have access to this by going to your library. Uh, this is my library, and you can see all the songs I've been making. But there it says, two-step, first song. 